In the last episode, we went visiting Foda Guada. There, we came to know through Mr. Abhijit Ambekar about the moats, the dry moat that is there on all three sides. We also went inside the water tank. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the first time that we have been allowed to go inside the water tank as this is out of bounds for all the tourists that are coming to Foda Guada. We also made ourselves aware about the rampart and the various aspects that are related to the rampart. With this episode coming to an end here, in the next episode, we will be seeing and entering again another place which is out of bounds for a lot of people, the lighthouse, the old lighthouse and the oldest lighthouse in India. We will also see the remaining part of the fort and from there the wonderful view that you can see of river Mandavi and the expansive Arabian Sea to the west of Goa. So here we go to the next episode of Fort Aguada. On the side of this fort, on the inside, there are arcs which have now been closed by uh, laterite stones. What were they used for? See, this fort was very important for this uh, Portuguese uh, uh, army. Okay. And there were some kind of structures for their residential purposes. Mm -hmm. But uh, when, it, when you go through the record, yes, you'll come to know that during the British occup occupied this fort, now yes, there were many structures. Okay. And later on, it was dis uh, that was uh, dismantled. Uh, we can say it was dismantled. It was taken out. Taken okay, out. Okay. But these things, because the, the death is not more. Yes. Around Could it be horse stables or something? Horse stable, then you, uh, that horse. Uh, there Would should be, be a, the depth should be on a higher okay. higher side. So it cannot be considered as a, as a horse. As but a horse. definitely, it's a resting place. We can say because okay. we have so many soldiers. Yes. So we having the, the uh, houses, yeah, some kind of structures for them. Yes. Apart from that, daytime also they can have they can keep their material Perfect. there. Perfect. Perfect. There are many uh, theories there, but later on it was closed. But why? Why? <laughs> it's a mysterious thing. Why it was it closed? So there is no explanation, I said. There is no but we can say that later on the opposite army they should not uh, get a sufficient Manage. place okay. to or could shelter, it be as a shelter. To, give, to give support to the fort uh, wall. Uh, because this is totally on the rock. Okay. And this foundation is so strong and uh, this monolithic kind of things we can see everywhere. Yes. Later on it may be close because if other uh, there should be no uh, no space. For the sheltering, yes. If this fort, because this fort never won by, uh, it was never won by the enemy. Never won by, the, never won by the enemy. Yes, enemies yes. of Portuguese. Yes. So this was a very important place. And so here we see a lot of residential structures. Residential structures should be there, but but he, it may be some kind of shelter for their soldiers. Okay. And here we can see the huge blocks. Okay. So such kind of things very essential for the Carriage. heavy artillery. Okay, 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 okay. Heavy artillery. Okay. So it so has steps also. Steps and such kind of things I have observed in other, other forts okay. where the forge welded cannon they were resting on forge such welded cannon. Forge welded like the ones you see in Bijapur and all this. And areas. our in Goa also. In Goa, the in cannon Kampal. of Banastari in Kampal. Kampal, that is the earliest. Uh, now that you have come on the cannon of Banastari. Please correct me, but that is the oldest cannon in Goa and it is the only one of its type in Goa. Yes, in Goa basically there are two types of cannon. One is forge welded and other is a cast cannon. In the cast, the material, they were bronze, in early phase they were using bronze and later on replaced with the cast, cast iron. iron because of the cost, cost factor. But forge welded cannon uh, were fabricated in earlier phase. Okay. 
and there are two theories now for this kampal cannon because one theory says ki it was fabricated by francisco anne in 1515 1515 that is three uh, five years after they came here yes hmm. and francisco anne was their main fabricator okay who, and his cannon one cannon still we can see military museum lisbon okay. it's very very kind similar to our kampal what cannon what is there in that And, yeah. and other thing is important. When Pietro della Valle was in Goa, he mentioned about the Kampal cannon, but he mentioned that this cannon were fabricated by the Adil Shah. Yes. Uh, there are two uh, that one claim, but if you compare the dates of this cannon, either made by Adil Shahi or Portuguese in 1515, it shows that it should be the earliest piece. earliest piece on indian soil soil but please uh, correct me here history and certain historians tell us that in 1512 afons the albuquer attacked banastari fort and he brought this cannon yes. from there so could it have been done before 1515 see especially portuguese uh, they having the two types of again cannon one is muzzle loading that we have in kampal yes. and other was a breech loading Okay, from behind. Behind, ne? the gunpowder was po, uh, that one filled from the behind one. Okay. So, but on Indian side, basically we are getting muzzle loading cannon. Hmm. There are again claim, but what sort of claim? But we can proudly say that in Goa we are having the earliest cannon of India. India. Okay. <laughs> Now this is one more thing that I must tell you all. My friend, Mr. Abhijit Ambedkar, though he is working in ASI, he has written three books. One is called Cannons of Goa. One is about one is about the Portuguese. arsenal, Portuguese arsenal and ammunition. And the third book is about about the Northern Konkan, that uh, especially uh, Rio Danda, about the forts, forts of Rio Danda, Portuguese forts. He, when he talks, he talks backed with a lot of information. So you may get his books in the in the bookstores. and they are collectors item i can vouch for that because i have them i have gone through them and if you are a history buff please get this into your collection because here you are you are going to have a canon of information in your library and very soon you will be getting one more book on oh. the dew artillery on the dew artillery dew artillery and its uh, town fortifi- fortification for the town this man is on the roll he is going to bombard everybody with his books so here we have got information on cannons let's proceed down our walkway So we have now come to the fourth bastion that is over here, and Abhijit, tell me that there is something a little different from here. So, Abhijit, sir, basically those forts were built after 16th century. So you can see the difference between the bash, pattern of bastions. Bastion means where the this small small platforms are platforms made. Platforms and on the elevated, elevated side, side, from where we they can keep vigil on larger area. Yes. So earlier phase. Up to 16th century, we are observing only the square-shaped bastions. Then, after 16th century, we are getting different kind of bastions, especially arrow-shaped bastions. So here, what we are uh, th- that is very prominent, prominent one, arrow-shaped bastion. Okay. It's, it's shapes like a arrow only. And what about so, this one? This is also arrow-shaped. It's a arrow, but here we can see the square. But from the outer side, it looks like a arrow shape. Okay. Okay, when we go from outside, we will see that. Yes. Okay, there is one more thing that I must tell you, ladies and gentlemen. When you come to this fort of Aguada, this is the tank from where the fort has got its name, and this is the only fort that the ASI is maintaining in the state of Goa. And what they have done is they have put up an open-air exhibition of the different forts in Goa, and they even have a model of. the fort that is placed right in the middle so let us now go down and there is a landscape model also ki about the giving the position each and each position of the forts with the kilometer with kilometers yes. so here we have got more information so now we can go down and see that 
Now when we are going down this ramp, it's a very very narrow one. The earlier ones were quite big. This is very narrow. So let's be a little careful in going down. You can see the steps going down. Maybe this was to exit this fort. But right now it has been blocked because uh, of the people and a lot of uh, maybe reptiles down there. May these things to maintain their uh, water yes. supply. Things. Okay. Now what Abhijit tells us is this is the place from where the water from the main tank was sent down to the lower fort. So maybe these steps were going down to maintain that water connection. When you come to this Aguada fort, you see all the ramparts, you see the tank, and you see this big lighthouse over here. Every one of you have seen it from outside, but today, thanks to ASI, we are going to see this lighthouse from inside. 
you are the lucky viewers. Watch Go Go and No Go. So, we have now come on the mezzanine or the first floor of the fort and we see this door. On this door is written, entry prohibited. Nobody is allowed to go in. But thanks to ASI, they have allowed us to take these graphics and bring it to you wherever you are in Goa or in India. For the people. For the people. <laughs> this Because these things belong to the people. So, let us enter inside and see how the lighthouse looks like. Now when we entered inside, we saw that there were some steps that were going down to the bottom of this uh, lighthouse. Abhijit mm -hmm. sir, what is What is this? Hey, this place for to for the light because the lighthouse the main purpose to emit the light for okay. the ships okay so earlier it was because of the oil the things oil the light okay. oil lamps they, uh, they were using yes like afterwards then refle uh, means there was some development modern lights modern came lights came yes they, they uh, introduced later on yes but let us not go much into technical words because my viewers would like to listen in words that i understand okay okay so here earlier they were all oil lamps that were used until over a period of time yes. they even used a bell over here and then the present day electronic one has yes. come up over there so that we will see because so here oil light now, it took at, uh, around means longer period to rotate one uh, uh, that one was, circle one circle yes and even uh, there uh, we can see the reflection was not much not much because okay. present when we can see 24 ma uh, nautical mile up to that we are getting the reflection so today the light that falls from here is seen at 24 nautical miles Mile. yes by the ships by the ships let's go up yes I have reached here to a place just below the light but when I came here the view was refreshing and what I saw over here was this plaque put here in 1864 during the tenure of Governador Kond the Torres Novish. This must have been when they upgraded the lighthouse from oil and from the earlier mechanisms to better mechanisms. Here there was a bell, the bell that you see on the church of Panjim and it was brought from the convent, from the ruins of the convent of St. Augustine in Old Goa. That we have already covered in our uh, episode on the Immaculate Conception Church of Panjim or the Panjim Church. So now I am going to show you the view that you get from here. It's amazing. Watch it for yourself. Uh, you can see the industrial estate towards Mapsa and then as we pan towards the south, we can see over Purori, just very close by here in uh, Sinkiri, you can see the St. Lawrence Church on the hillock where they have the blessing of the sea on 10th of August and below that you can see a huge mansion built by uh, a private party. And if you see towards the shoreline, you can see how badly the part of the fort is getting damaged because of the rains and the waves. Behind you can see 
the city of Panjim over here and you can see the two tall towers, the Durdarshan tower and the micro uh, wave tower. Further down you see the Marriott Hotel, then you see the Miramar Beach and then you see the Raj Bhavan. Now you can make out from here how Raj Bhavan is placed exactly in the center of the mouths of both the rivers, River Mandavi and River Zuari. And the British had come over here to assist the Portuguese because this was the mouth that you see which was blockaded by the Dutch and the French. You can see the Marmagoa Harbour right behind and behind faintly you can see two islands at the Grand Island and what you see now is the sea which is called as the Arabian Sea and which is our neighbour along the western coast of Goa and this coast stretches to 105 kilometres. What the lighthouse and the light is all about? Come up, Vijit. Yes, please. What a view! What a view! A million dollar view is the term that I would use for this particular view. I would have loved to have a bungalow in such places. But this is my Goa. The whole of Goa is so beautiful. I don't need to have a bungalow at any one place. Right now I am standing at the very place where the light shone on the sea. Maybe I am feeling like I am shining the light about this Aguada fort to all of you through this program. Now when they constructed this particular small cubicle, they had glasses. And the most important thing that has to be noted over here is that the dome on top over here is made of brass or bronze some type of an alloy, so are the handles and the hinges of this door. They have lasted in their same condition for so many, 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 many years, if I cannot say centuries. And you can see when the light shone from here, it would shine on the entire horizon. And from here, you can see the new lighthouse. This is the new lighthouse.
So we have come to this place now, which is uh, got a very high wall and there is a room over here, it is closed. Maybe, possibly, this could have been where the ammunition was stored or it could have been the magazine. So Abhijit Sab, we have now come to the end of our walk in Agwada Fort, yeah. the upper fort of Agwada. And I'm sure that you will have learned a lot of things that were not known to you. In fact, I am going inside the tank for the first time after almost about 45 years. I had come here when I was a small child. Going in the, in the lighthouse gave me memories of my childhood. I must thank Archaeological Survey of India and my friend Mr. Uh, Ambekar for taking us around and showing us all these particular things. There may be many of you who may know a lot of more things about Agwada. There is possibility that I may have made mistakes. So in case you would like to send your views to us, there is the email here on uh, your screen and a WhatsApp number. Please write to us. Let me bid adieu to you and say thanks to my friend Thank you. <laughs> Abhijit Ambekar and I am sure that they will keep on assisting us to get all those uh, hidden things or the lesser known things to you. So bye bye. See you in the next photo.